Good morning, Mr. Take care of you and me, my dear. <laughs> Uh, we like your book so very much, and uh, we particularly like uh, The Good Master. We have heard that this story is uh, about you. Is this true? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I was the skinny monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and you really did uh, take the uh, horses away from uh, oh, the wagon. The wagon yes, away from the dumpy on to right off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and drove home alone without me. Drove home alone. They took me. The horses took me home. <laughs> <laughs> We thought it was very funny when you climbed up on the rafters and ate the sausage. My uncle didn't. <laughs> Much later on, I didn't because I was a little sick from that many sausages. <laughs> we wondered if they made you sick from that uh, that much. Uh, is the good master still alive? As far as I know, yes, but I hadn't heard from him for quite a while. He must be getting quite old. We liked him so much. He's yes, a good man. He, he was wonderful. Milky was a beautiful horse, um, and you probably had a lot of fun with uh, oh, yes. with, with her. And I had her for about five years until she grew too old to be ridden. Mm -hmm. And then she was put out on pasture, and she was very happy. In the book it says that uh, the good master didn't want you to ride side saddle. No real horseman that approves of side saddle. It uh, spoils the rider, and it spoils the horse too to that one-sided weight, mm -hmm. and uh, it's difficult for the rider to learn to ride the stride, mm -hmm. and also difficult to retrain a horse. I see. So you never rode a milky never, side saddle? No. A horse, no. no. Uh -huh. A stride. Uh, does it hurt the horse? Uh, no, the horse? It doesn't hurt the horse, but it gets him into bad habits. I see. Well, it seems as if it was a dangerous way to ride. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And my uncle was a wonderful rider, mm -hmm. and he just couldn't see I said all. It's good that you can write such good stories and draw such good pictures, too. Well, that's probably because I'm primarily an illustrator. And uh, whenever I start writing a story, or think of writing a story, I saw it in pictures first, even if the pictures later change as the story may change, as they always do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in my mind, I work both on the text and the pictures almost simultaneously. Now, uh, in other words, you're drawing pictures along while you're writing. In my head. Oh, but not, not the actual. Not, no. Those no. are done after the story. After the story, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. That depends mostly on... Uh, how many pages, you see, the publisher has to determine mm -hmm. how many pages of the printed book they can afford, mm -hmm. and consequently how much space there is going to be for pictures. I see. Uh, do you sometimes make pictures then that you can't, they can't be used? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You yes. have to decide which ones mm -hmm. have to be used. Mm -hmm. How did you happen to write this uh, book, The Good Master? The Good Master, I still don't know. Uh, do we have time for oh, a little story yeah. about Oh, yes, yes. Well, I went to New York because I had a letter of introduction to this wonderful editor in Nancy. And uh, what I really wanted was a job to illustrate a book. And it was the post-depression days, and publishers were doing very little. And certainly not introducing anyone who wasn't already known. So we talked for several hours, and uh, she liked my pictures, and she told me that, unfortunately, right now she couldn't give me a job. But she sent me home with these words, you know, Miss Hardy, I like the way you tell a story. Why don't you go home and write a story about your childhood, and maybe we'll publish it for Christmas? which was a very kind way of saying, I'm sorry, <laughs> but we can't use you. At least that's the way I thought of it. But uh, I couldn't get rid of the thought. I didn't know how to write. I've never written anything. As a matter of fact, if you think my English is bad now, you should have heard me then. <laughs> but I bought paper and pencils and sat down and started to write, and I wrote and wrote and wrote, and... It grew to be about a six, 
inch, seven inch, great big ring of paper. The whole story written in longhand. And I thought, well, I don't know how good the story is, but it should be enough for mm -hmm. a book. So I sent it in, uh, mostly as a kind of practical joke on myself, expecting a rejection slip. Instead of that, in less than two weeks I had a contract. It was published for Christmas. And today, after 34 years, that one book alone outsells the 11 others that I have done since. And I think it's because it was my story, it was me, and the people I loved. And, well, it's, it was part of my life, and all I had to do is put it on paper. You were such... Um uh, interesting children. Uh, children can identify you. You know, you weren't with you. You weren't goody goodies and this sort of thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> certainly I wasn't. <laughs> um, essentially good, but I mean, you got into the same problems that children have or young people I, have. I often wonder what I would have become had my father not sent me to Uncle Martin. Oh, that's a uh, mm. cause for speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a brat. And he was a good master with people as well as uh, oh, yes. animals. Mm -hmm. uh, but the whole family was too, wasn't it? I mean, yes, many people. Yes, that my know. aunt too. Mm -hmm. And the uh, shepherds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the old man who took care of the horses. Yes. Now, when you uh, make your pictures, do you do them in pencil or what medium do you in use? In pencil. Mm -hmm. Even the colored pictures, they are all colored pencils. They're colored pencils. Mm -hmm. it gives that soft... Uh, yes. Uh, but, you know, it's a funny thing. I know children like colored pictures. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think in black and white. And for me, it's very difficult to think in color. Um do you use uh, live people and animals to draw Always. Them? Always. Uh, now, um, what about the horses? For, every, for instance, now, like Chester Oak, you, you had uh, uh, horses that you, they were brought here, is this the idea, or do you go out somewhere? To oh, I go out. Mm -hmm. And I think horses are also part of me because I have grown up with them. Do you like to draw horses better than anything else? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they are the most difficult of all animals to draw. They... Um, they have power and they have grace and uh, mm -hmm. you kind of have to know their anatomy. Mm -hmm. This shows uh, in the, that the big spread in the, uh, the white stag, those horses with the muscles and the, you know that they, they are galloping yes, after the white stag. Yes. Right. One of many uh, in there that are so good. The uh, singing tree was sad, but we were glad to have more stories about the Maggie family. Is it Maggie? Is that the way you pronounce it? Yes. Uh, did your father uh, go to war and get captured? Yes. The way it was? Mm -hmm. My uncle. And then, did you really find Uncle Martin in the yes, hospital? Yes, I did. No. And my cat had kittens in the hospital. Just, uh, that was just, as, just as it's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and I became so fond of those Russian prisoners. They were such lovely people. And so were the little German children. Mm -hmm. And as far as we were concerned, they were just people. We didn't care whether they were Chinese or Japanese or Germans or Russians. They were people just like us. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the sad thing about war, isn't, isn't it? it? And, uh, isn't it terrible? Yes. We are put into fenced around yards. You are mm -hmm. a German, therefore I hate you, or you are a Russian, therefore I hate mm -hmm. you, which is all wrong. Mm -hmm. We are just people. Now, um, uh, if um, if you are the uh, you are the Kate in the story, not if you are the Kate, you are the Kate in the story. Now, how did you happen to come to America? Well, I came to America very much later. I mean, uh, Kate was about ten years old. Then, after a while, Father took me back to Budapest, and I went to high school and the Academy of Arts where I was trained. And I had an uncle who lived in America, and he invited me for a short visit. That was in 1922. <laughs> and you've been here ever since. I've been here ever since. <laughs> well, we're glad you came for such a nice long well, visit. Well, thank you. I'm glad I came. <laughs> okay. Now, did you go to school in America at all? 
I just went to school to learn English because I, I couldn't speak English. And you write in English? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. While I can still speak French and German, I can understand Hungarian, but I can no longer speak it. Mm. It's possibly, it's because I realized quite soon that as long as one is going to be an American, an American citizen, it's very important to learn to think and speak like an American. Mm -hmm. I just moved away from uh, any contact with Hungarians. Mm -hmm. They are very nice people, very lovely people. But right here I didn't want to become part of another little Hungary. Mm -hmm. You became part of America. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> now, is Janti uh, still living in uh, Hungary? The last time I heard... Um, he was still on the big range mm -hmm. where I was, and uh, he's not very happy under the political conditions, mm -hmm. but he's sufficiently removed from politics, and so I think he lives more or less the same. And he still raises horses? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what did you think when you got the Newbery Award for the White Stag? I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Uh, do you do you want me to tell you why I couldn't believe yes, it? Yes, I wish you would. Well, as I said in the foreword, I wanted to write something, not actually factual, just dates and facts and facts and facts mm -hmm. about Hungary and how they how Hungary came to be. And uh, I thought of the legend of the White Stag. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll try. So that is one of the stories that just popped out whole. It took me just about two weeks to write it. Perfect. And I didn't think very much of it. It came so easily, without any effort on my part. I, I didn't think it could be any good. I didn't even keep a carbon copy. I just sent the manuscript off to Mae Massey. And two days later, she was on the telephone, and she was almost crying. And uh, I'm even embarrassed even now. Katie, how did you do it? This is an epic poem. You don't speak this language as well. How did you write it? I, I don't know how I wrote it. So when they sent me the uh, text set up in print, that was the first time I had actually read the story after I'd sent off the original mm -hmm. manuscript. And then I just sat there, kind of glassy-eyed, and I said the same thing to myself. I don't know this kind of English. I don't know these words. Uh, how did it happen? I still don't know. It was truly inspired writing. I still don't know. It came from somewhere out of the blue. Well, in other words, you didn't do a lot of research before you read it. I didn't have it. to because uh, it's part of the heritage of every Hungarian child. Uh, as all legends and myths are part of the heritage of every child in every different country. So it's it's part of yourself, you mm -hmm. know it. Mm -hmm. Do uh, do you usually write books this uh, quickly? Did you ever have any other book that took a long time? Yes, and amazingly, um, it is a picture book with just captions, no more than a few hundred words. It's a picture book about the life of a cat. And uh, those few hundred words, I worked three years on those few hundred words to reduce them, reduce the text into words that a cat can think. Uh, for instance, uh, when she gets lost on the highway, I never mention automobile because a cat can't think automobile. Oh. Hmm. So, <laughs> actually, 
In those three years, I was learning to think how I could cat. <laughs> that must be Gypsy. That's Gypsy. gypsy. They uh, watched that for two weeks. And the tree for Peter came out of the blue, too. And that took about two weeks. I saw this little boy outside of New York. I was on a train coming home from New York. And uh, it's in the book. The illustration is in the yeah. book. This pale little boy hanging on to a broken down iron fence with all the broken down old houses behind him. And he had such a longing expression in his eyes, looking out over the Hudson River. As soon as we passed him, that whole story just, it was in my head what to do with it. And I came home and put words on paper, and that's three for Peter. And I have often said this when people ask me, when are you going to write another story? Are you working on something now? And I have to say this. Well, if a story walks through the door and sits in my lap and says, please write me, <laughs> I'll write I it. Did. But I can't make up a story. It's impossible for me to manufacture a story. Every one of my books has an original, oh, what shall I say, it's it's like a germ, you know. Oh, yeah. That starts yes. growing and growing and growing, but that germ is true. It's, it's a happening. Well, then the tenement tree is, too. Is that oh, true? Oh, oh, that's true from beginning to end. Uh, and I have seen it happen from uh, the days that I used to visit Tino and his family in New York mm -hmm. until he came out and spent the whole summer with me. Oh, you are Aunt Trina. I'm Aunt Trina, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we did this book together. For goodness sake. He had this wonderful imagination. Mm -hmm. You see, where his father lived was very close to what in New York City is a tenement district, mm -hmm. crowded and... And he could, he could see the counterparts mm -hmm. in nature. The, the, uh, the, he called that big oak tree, the tenement tree, mm -hmm. because so many people lived there crowded together, mm -hmm. and they acted just like people. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful stories about your books, and uh, uh, we're just so pleased to have them and just so pleased to talk to you, and we do thank you so very much. I have had a delightful time and give my very best wishes to all the children.